Uh, afternoon, thanks for joining me. Um, so my talk's called Bringing a Seven-Year-Old Game Back from the Dead, a Diamond Dash Journey. Um, I'm a senior product manager at Wooga, about 10 years experience in free-to-play, specializing in monetization and live ops. So today I'm going to talk about uh, one of Wooga's um, oldest and more, most successful games called Diamond Dash. Uh, hopefully most people have heard of it. It was very popular back on Facebook when Facebook games were exploding. Um, some facts, so it's actually seven years old now, a bit of a spoiler from the title there. Uh, it's been installed over 200 million times. We have a Facebook audience um, of 10 million users and our users are still very loyal. So 50% of players pay for uh, payers still playing after one year and we still receive up to 10,000 organic installs per day. This session, um, who's it for? Uh, it's, you don't have to have a seven year old game for it to be relevant. Um, so, but it's for anybody who is currently operating live games or has a legacy portfolio. Uh, I'm going to walk through this Diamond Dash story as a bit of a business case and hopefully give you insights into how Wugo evaluates uh, business opportunities and how we um, are looking at the market uh, periodically to see how things have shifted and how we use that to reignite our players, uh, player bases and our um, products. And um, why it's relevant is because uh, things change quite a lot in this industry and um, it's a good example of how we've had to challenge some of our assumptions and come up with um, yeah, finding new opportunities that we didn't know were there. So brief history of Diamond Dash. This uh, chart in the background is our daily active users for the last seven years. Um, Facebook, uh, sorry, Diamond Dash was launched on Facebook in 2011 and shortly after we released the mobile versions and um, obviously it did quite well, and we dedicated a full live ops team to, um, to, to furthering the game. And in 2012, uh, the match three industry got pretty popular, um, and a small candy game came out of somewhere, and we didn't really pay too much attention to it at the time. Diamond Dash and Bejeweled Blitz were dominating the match three audience. Uh, over time, uh, Wuga also shifted its focus onto uh, newer hits such as Jelly Splash and Pearl's Peril. And although our DAO was declining, um, our monetization was going up, so we were still very invested in uh, Diamond Dash as a product. And around 2015, we scaled the team back to something we called internally light ops, which is not uh, necessarily sunsetting the game, but operating it at a very minimum level with um, just possibly one product manager and developer working part-time ma uh, maintaining uh, SDK updates and sales and live events. And then some more interesting things happened um, in the match three space. Um, Few entries came to the top grossing charts that seemed to disrupt this uh, predominant, uh, the prevalent saga model. Um, mostly games that were experimenting either with new core mechanics such as Toy Blast or around meta game um, such as the uh, Gardenscapes and Gummy Drop games. And uh, around this time as well, we also just launched a sequel to um, Bubble Island. Bubble Island was originally released around the time Diamond Dash was released, and Bubble Island 2 was our first uh, real sequel at Wooga that did quite well. So about 18 months ago, we were asking ourselves what's next for our portfolio, uh, specifically the Diamond Dash IP. So we came up with several options. Um, we could either reinvest with uh, the live product and see if there's any more uh, opportunity to be made with what was already there. Um, we could create a sequel, and, or we could do nothing. So we evaluated all these options. So we took a look at Diamond Dash against the current match three market and uh, did a few pros and cons lists. So this is the case for uh, reinvesting in live ops. The game still had a lot of uh, brand power, the core gameplay is still very sticky, and the market seemed to be trended positively to a way that could support um, uh, yeah, Diamond Dash uh, rebirth, if you like. 
unfortunately, there's quite a lot that we decided was not working. Um, Saga games uh, in the match three, uh, sorry, in the match three space, Saga games were still definitely leading, level based, as opposed to the uh, timed blitz mechanic. And we were dealing with uh, code base and design, which was from 2011, so very suboptimal in terms of what we could deliver KPI wise, which in turn meant that marketability and scaling user acquisition was going to be a challenge. When we looked at what we could do with a sequel, I'll, um, it's obviously a chance to reboot the entire franchise and uh, update all of the systems and monetization opportunities in there. And we thought that uh, having a brand power as uh, powerful as Diamond Dash could uh, work in our favor as well. On the negative side of that, there are obviously cost and time constraints. And we've seen that brand doesn't necessarily mean a free ride on user acquisition. So while we have seen games uh, pull off sequels extremely uh, well, like Angry Birds 2 or CRS, CSR 2, there's also been many games that have also tried and failed. And then our third option was doing nothing at all, keeping it in light ops. We'd be able to see, um, uh, obviously the KPI is pretty predictable and we'd know what we were dealing with, but we have to decide whether or not we want to miss the opportunity that we thought was before us. So at this time we decided that we wanted to attempt a sequel. And the vision for Diamond Dash 2 would have been uh, sagifying the core gameplay, so turning the level, um, sorry, the 60 second blitz into a level based progression using tapping mechanics, it's just quite similar to Toy Blast and wrapping it in a light meta game similar to Gardenscapes. We began concepting this and came up with uh, a few um, uh, market validation assets. So here you can see that this would be uh, a level where the player would rebuild a little panda paradise and uh, keep all your pandas pretty happy and uh, lots of fun. So pretty accessible concept that we were happy to move forward with um, more marketing validation. And we did this by uh, starting to talk with our users uh, amongst other things. So we did what most people uh, would do nothing really special here. We um, dug into player type research, um, lots of great things happening around psychographics at the moment, uh, user surveys, and um, actually talking to the people who were both still playing Diamond Dash and those that had left either recently or a long time ago. And we asked them a bunch of questions, um, but one in particular was very revealing, which was how does Diamond Dash make you feel? And we got responses uh, kind of like this. So our players are uh, lots, uh, very competitive and they liked playing Diamond Dash because it made them feel on top of the world and um, very smart and powerful. This was a bit surprising to us because our initial assumption was the match three players, so we're using the bottle model here as a, which I'm sure you're familiar with, but it's, whichever one you want to subscribe to, this is uh, just easier for explaining this, uh, this thought process. Um, yeah, match three players, we kept quite happily in the Explorers, single player experience, maybe branching out into a little bit of achievement hunting or social gameplay. And we thought Diamond Dash's place in this was probably more in the middle. It is, does have lots of competitive elements in it and that's possibly why it was so appealing to such a wide audience in the beginning. In 2016, however, when we were talking to our players and trying to model the psychographics of them, we realized that they were really competitive, straight up killers that really only played Diamond Dash to beat other people. But Diamond Dash is definitely a match three game competing with uh, the likes of Candy Crush and Jelly Splash. Uh, or is it? So, and based on this, assumption, uh, this research, we realized that today, Diamond Dash was probably less about the match three aspect and more about this, the competitive aspect uh, of it. And that was a bit of an epiphany for us. Because um, we always considered Diamond Dash as a match three game and have been treating it as such. So I coined this term casual competitive internally, um, where Diamond, uh, and put Diamond Dash in a, a genre of games which are skill-based, competitive, social, or if you like, a, a casual version of mid-core. Um, 
so you know, probably not heard the term casual competitive because I totally made it up. But if you start looking at the market and seeing which other games exist underneath these design pillars, there's actually quite a lot. And those design pillars are what uh, arguably are contributing to these games' success. So we took a fresh look at it and saw, okay, so how does Diamond Dash, if it doesn't stack up so well against the match three um, genre, how does it stack up against casual competitive? Uh, in this space, there are not a lot of match three or um, pattern uh, shapes uh, and color matching games. Um, Candy Crush is up there. Uh, in bracketed, as obviously there are competitive aspects in there, but I wouldn't consider them the core driver for most players. Diamond Dash still never lost its uh, recognition, so we still have a lot of brand power. And you can see from the top grossing list that there's a lot of opportunity for uh, lots of revenue to be made from both in-app purchases and ads, because this genre, uh, the audience is typically pretty forgiving of quite uh, aggressive ad strategies. So when we reevaluated it against uh, casual competitive instead of match three, we realized that we still had all the original strengths and opportunities, but we probably had quite a few more uh, to add on there. And some of our risks actually became uh, redundant. So whilst the mechanics are outdated for a match three game, sure, um, the blitz mechanic is still quite useful for uh, competitive games. And some of our newfound strengths start to cancel out some of our, um, our previous weaknesses. Did leave us with a couple of highlighted issues. Uh, these are what we consider our top issues still. Um, that we still have quite outdated legacy design. We had a code base spread over three native um, versions instead of a unified code base. And we weren't sure if this was still a marketable concept or not. So we revisited our original decision and thought, Given this new information, maybe we should shelve the sequel and reinvest in the live ops that we had. We then set about creating a vision for what Diamond Dash Rebooted could look like, and it was going to be focused on five design principles, which we identified as key trends within the casual competitive um, genre. The first thing we had to do was ask ourselves, could we actually build the improvements? Um, we are still stuck by the code base, and can we actually sell it once we've built it? Because we still had a lot of unknowns floating around marketability. So these next few slides are talking through our process of about 18 months. First and foremost, Diamond Dash is still a live game, so live ops still had to be maintained. So the first thing we had to do was maintain our CRM channels. This is a nice photo of me not looking too flattering. Um, but really opening up a dialogue with our players, and that's uh, going to be key in a few slides as well. Also maintaining our live events and sales strategies. First, then we had to validate our business. So we went back to our users, um, started to ask them questions more along the lines of the vision that we had created, whether they'd be interested in it. We still uh, wanted, we knew we were going to be ad supported for this business model to work. So we took just our iOS uh, SKU and integrated an ad strategy into it, which was uh, extremely successful and helped us validate parts of the business side. Um, so integrating ads reward, through rewarded video into Diamond Dash um, yeah, uh, was an increase about 700% on ad revenue or ad up down. And also we started to dig into competitors a little more thoroughly in different areas than we had before. Once we were confident that this was something we wanted to move forward with, we invested in uh, unifying the code base. It's not a very a uh, straightforward process, but luckily uh, another team at Wooga had uh, done something similar the year before, it's Pearl's Peril. And we learned, a, they had uh, a slightly rougher time than we had, but we were able to learn from, um, from their process. And in about six months, we managed to migrate over to Unity and deploy to all platforms. If we hadn't done this step, then it would have been too much work to invest in new features or uh, any further optimizations. We also need to validate our marketing angle. Can we actually sell it? So we were speaking to these players and um, trying to recreate a strategy that would give these results. 
Um, we did this through several uh, different methods, but uh, I'll just talk you through uh, one. We produced the piece of key art. Um, so these two obviously very well-known pieces of art. We wanted to get inspired by that and hopefully reach our audience. So we created our own version of this image in a diamond dash world. And the positive reception that this received allow us to, um, to commit to an art reskin as well. So Diamond Dash looks very old because it is. It was drawn um, seven years ago, but over, the, over this next step, we uh, updated all the art assets. So you're seeing befores and afters um, and developed a much more polished um, competitive uh, product. The final stage was the most challenging, which is where we had to deploy new code base and new art to an uh, active user base without them knowing or them complaining about it. So while we had a very smooth rollout plan, uh, not everything always worked uh, quite as smoothly. Um, and this process started to be a little longer than, uh, than we'd planned. Um, so for example, some things, some hiccups that arrived, uh, you may remember that Facebook made a couple of changes to its platform. Uh, right when we were in the middle of rolling this out on, so we, we were juggling six different versions on three different platforms whilst fighting, um, yeah, some unexpected fallout. Um, and this was a bit of a reality check for us to just remember that we are still working on a live game and that we do need to, main, to uh, treat it as such. Um, so new features gave way to bug fixes and stability, um, but luckily because we'd invested all this time in our CRM channels earlier on, we had all the tools in place to uh, mitigate this as well as we possibly could with our users. So I'd have loved to be able to stand here and tell you which features we'd already implemented, but we are a little behind schedule. But when we get there, we will be doing um, features that we feel are um, now commonplace in the casual competitive genre, but not yet seen in the match three genre. So for example, buy-in tournaments as seen in eight ball pool or general poker games, for example, um, are at the top of our list. Doubling down on our social and um, some quick wins from monetization. But at the same time, we um, will use this as an opportunity to throw stuff out that is not working as well. We're off to a promising start. Um, this is a graph showing uh, the engagement of daily active users, how many rounds people play. It's gone up by about 40% since, we used, uh, since the new version has rolled out. Our video bookings is working on all platforms. <coughs> And uh, this is day one, seven and 30 retention, I think. Um, obviously, uh, we get a nice uplift uh, throughout the player life cycle. So all um, early indications are showing that this is uh, working positively for us. So some key takeaways. Uh, it's worth checking in with your products periodically and evaluating them against the current landscape because things do change quickly. Um, and you need to challenge your assumptions on what you thought your product was or what you thought its audience was. So getting to know your players, again, um, is most worthwhile asking people who've recently left um, why and what they're playing now. Uh, sorry, uh, challenging assumptions, making sure that you're not locked down to uh, a way of thinking that might not be so relevant anymore. And investing in live ops is the shortest path to the revenue. This was another key point of uh, our decision to shelve the sequel and reinvest in our live ops. We saw more opportunity there uh, in a shorter time frame. And if it can go wrong, there is a chance that it might. Um, so as much as you can, be prepared for things falling to pieces or setting on fire because it can happen, uh, especially when you're in the middle of one of the most complex products uh, projects in a product's lifestyle. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Um, you mentioned briefly at the end that you're re-engaging uh, with a new social strategy. Would you mind talking about that a little bit? Right, yes. Yeah, so, um, Diamond Dash grew on Facebook, and Facebook has always been a huge part of our um, of our social strategy. Um, but since the recent changes that I mentioned uh, caused a couple of hiccups, that we have to plan for alternatives um, to to Facebook. So some things we're we're working on uh, involve 
um, more community features within the game. So, for example, we have a game mode where you can compete with play with your friends as long as they're in connected in Facebook and also playing. Now, this was very successful when everybody was playing Diamond Dash and everyone was connecting on Facebook. But now um, we need to find alternatives to this because most active players don't play that mode anymore because they're not competing with anyone. So um, we're trying to find a way where they can compete with other active players, not necessarily have to be friends with them on Facebook, for example. Okay, well, I got I got a question for you. All right, <laughs> so uh, um, so you were talking earlier about your CRM, right, and that how much it saved your ass, right? <laughs> so um, maybe you can um, uh, expand a little bit to uh, what type of CRM you're using or um, how you're using it and share that part. Yeah. So we have two major channels for CRM right now. We use uh, Facebook, obviously, and we have a dedicated community manager who's responsible for producing regular content and informing the game, uh, players of uh, upcoming changes. So um, this person was very useful in uh, preparing players for changes, but also communicating anything that might have uh, gone wrong. Um, we also got the games team involved in regular posts. So. Um, yeah, so we would take photos of the games team and uh, prepare hopefully more thoughtful and personalized messages from us to them to kind of humanize the, the progress, mostly because we were terrified of them because they're so, they're so angry uh, and competitive people. Um, but they, they really appreciate this. You can really tell the sentiment changing um, from, from people complaining uh, or talking about something that they wish were fixed but not feeling heard compared to uh, actually investing in taking the time and replying to eat as many as you can. The second channel we use is HelpShift. Um, so players can log into FAQ and, um, and access our customer support via uh, the HelpShift SDK. Um, not Diamond Dash yet, but some other Wooga products are having a, a lot of success using HelpShift's uh, direct uh, inbox, or oh, sorry, uh, native inbox for communicating with players, obviously offering free gifts, um, giving even more information beyond uh, release notes about what's changed and where things are. Uh, it's all, uh, it's definitely a worthwhile investment, I think, for, for any live ops game. <laughs> Hello, hi, uh, we have a game on Flash technology still, and what could you suggest for us, if uh, you want to, if you want to put it on uh, on Facebook or uh, others uh, platform. Okay, so the question is, you've got a flash game, and exactly. You, okay, yeah. So, um, so we dis so the depreciation of flash was a big part of our um, decision to migrate to, to Unity as well, because Facebook players is still a massive part of our daily actives. Uh, what are your options? Um, so. Yeah, uh, I, I guess you're looking at a, a port or a rewrite um, okay. in this situation. Yeah. I go yeah, HTML5. Yeah. HTML5 or Unity, or it's uh, that's... Yeah, um, I guess I would look to see what your pl what kind of game you have, how, what complexity you need. I mean, WebGL is not without its limitations. Okay. Um, but then, yeah, so it's... Yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, Tim.